In the next part of our program, we'd like to show you more about the cardiac ablation procedure. Cardiac ablation is an important advancement in the treatment of arrhythmias. It is a widely used procedure that has proven to be safe, effective, and long-lasting. I was very interested in finding out what the other option was so I didn't have to continue to medicate. The ablation would allow them to go up through the veins to that section of the heart and actually deaden the nerve so that it could continue back to its normal rhythm. If you and your doctor feel that cardiac ablation is the right choice for you, your doctor will refer you to an electrophysiologist who is a cardiac specialist trained in the diagnosis and treatment of problems with the electrical systems of the heart. Let's look at what you can expect to encounter throughout your cardiac ablation procedure. A few days prior to your ablation procedure, you will be scheduled for some routine blood work. Be sure to let your doctor know all the medications you are taking and if you have allergies to any medications or to x-ray dye. The night before your procedure, you may not have anything to eat or drink after midnight. Unless your doctor has advised you otherwise, you may take your medications on the morning of the ablation procedure with a sip of water. Cardiac ablation procedures are performed in the electrophysiology or EP lab in the hospital. A specially trained team of nurses and technicians will work with your electrophysiologist to help provide you care before, during, and after your procedure. When you arrive at the EP lab, you will change into a hospital gown and be assisted onto a padded x-ray table. The lab staff will do everything possible to keep you comfortable. A nurse will place ECG pads on the skin of your chest and back. These will allow the doctor to monitor your heartbeat during the procedure. Your blood pressure and heart rate will be checked and monitored throughout the procedure. An intravenous or IV line will be attached to you. It will contain a mild sedative to help you relax. You will be sleepy, but you will probably be awake during the procedure. The areas of your body where the ablation catheters are to be inserted will be cleaned and shaved. Typically, this will be in the groin area of both legs and possibly the right side of your neck. Your doctor will numb the sites where catheters are to be placed in your body with a local anesthetic. You will feel a minor prick or sting as the local anesthetic is administered. Then you will be covered from your neck to your toes with a large sterile sheet. Your doctor and the lab staff will wear gowns and gloves to maintain sterile conditions during the procedure. The doctor will make incisions at the insertion sites. Small, flexible tubes called sheaths will be inserted into the blood vessels at the insertion sites. The doctor then inserts one or more catheters into the sheath. An x-ray machine called a fluoroscope will provide images of your heart during the procedure to help your doctor accurately position the catheters. You should not feel the catheters being inserted into your heart. Before your doctor can perform the actual ablation, he must identify the specific area of your heart where your arrhythmia is coming from. To do this, an electrical map of your heart is created. This is done by recording the electrical activity of your heart while your arrhythmia is active. You may experience palpitations in your chest during this time, but otherwise you will be resting comfortably. Once your doctor has located the precise origin of your arrhythmia, a special ablation catheter will be inserted. The tip of the ablation catheter is placed next to the heart tissue in the targeted area. RF energy is delivered through the tip of the catheter to neutralize the problem cells, restoring the normal pathways of your heart, allowing it to beat normally. Depending on the complexity of your arrhythmia, the procedure may take from about an hour to several hours. If you experience any chest discomfort or pressure during the procedure, be sure to inform the staff. Do not hesitate to ask any questions you may have at any time. I was actually surprised when he said, we're done because um, it had gone so smoothly and so quickly, uh, I hardly felt like anything had occurred. When I woke up after the procedure, uh, I wasn't expecting to find out that I had been cured of Wolf Parkinson's white. I just thought that, that the study was done to find out more information, so I was relieved. When the procedure is done, you will be moved to a recovery area. The catheters and sheaths will be removed and pressure will be applied to the insertion sites for approximately 20 minutes to control any bleeding that may occur. When bleeding is stopped, a bandage will be applied over the insertion area. You will need to lie flat for at least four hours and maybe as long as six hours. It is important not to bend your legs so the insertion sites can begin to heal. 
A nurse will check your blood pressure and heart rate and monitor the insertion sites at regular intervals. You will be allowed to eat, but you will not be permitted to walk to the bathroom during this time, so a bedpan or urinal must be used should you have the need. You should call your nurse immediately if you have any pain or notice any bleeding at the insertion sites. Your doctor will visit you to discuss your ablation procedure and the results of treating your arrhythmia. You will also discuss any other things you should do or treatments you may need, if any. Most people are able to leave the hospital the same day, though in some cases an overnight stay may be necessary. It is important that you have someone that can drive you home and stay with you that evening. Recovering from a catheter ablation procedure is very quick. Many people are able to resume most of their normal activities 24 hours after the procedure. Once I took it easy for three to four weeks, I was able to go back to all activities as strenuous as I wanted and with no repercussions. Any medical procedure that involves the heart and blood vessels has some potential risk. The most common risk with an ablation procedure include infection or bleeding. Your doctor will discuss all potential risks and answer any questions you may have regarding the safety of cardiac ablation. I would say the greatest change is the fact that I'm back to normal and I have no restrictions in my life. Since the procedure, I've been able to live my life normally like I did before I felt any effects from the syndrome. Have the catheter ablation. It is simple, it is thorough, it takes care of the problem. Anybody that has the opportunity to have a procedure that will free them from symptoms and free them from having to take medication for life it's amazing that we have those options.